in when it's been 10 minutes and then 15 and then from there we just have a few questions. Hello everyone, we are Kehun, Ujin, and Jun Sung from Korea Science Academy of Khan, and we preceded a research regarding protein quantification with methyl organic framework coated quartz crystal microbalance. So to start off with how we started this research, actually every single adult in Korea has to have an annual health care check where they check their blood pressure or if they have any problems in, inside their bodies. And by coincidence, Ujin's father and uh, my father turned out to have a higher percentage of LDL, low density lipoproteins, than average. And by that, we became intrigued in this low density lipoproteins and how to quantify it, which expanded into our research objective, which was to create a protein sensor with both high selectivity and sensitivity. In our research, we uh, used two main concepts, which are the QCMs and MOS, and I'll explain them briefly one by one. So first of all is uh, quartz crystal microbalance, aka QCMs, which is a mass sensing device that can measure up to very small, small amounts. And by this device, we can measure up to nanograms, so it's, it means that it's extremely sensitive and it can also measure just one single layer of oxygen. And the basic principle of this device is that it, uh, it oscillates at a resonance frequency and when uh, an object is placed on top of this quartz, the resonance frequency decreases and through that amount of decrease in frequency, we can calculate the amount of mass of that object. There actually, in previous researches, there has been many tries in trying to increase the sensitivity of this QCM, but it has all, many of these researches have poor re reprodu reproducibilities and it has few complicated procedures. So we intended to um, reduce the sensitivity of this QCM through another method, which is by coating these metal organic frameworks on top. So what are metal organic frameworks? Um, these metal organic frameworks are, I think you can't see, but they are um, porous material that is formed by a uh, layer of inorganic, organic um, compounds. And you can see here that um, by the type of metal ion or organic linker that you use, you can create many, many different kinds of metal organic frameworks. And they are very famous for having a large surface area because of all these pores inside this framework. And so the scheme of our uh, research comes up like this, we have the QCM at the bottom, and then we coat the metal organic framework on top to increase its sensitivity. And then we need to increase our selectivity through the receptor and protein interactions, which I believe all of you know that it is very specific. So here comes another important concept, which is his tabs, and they are attached to these protein receptors, and these his tabs are very famous for their um, ability to coordinate with metal ions, which I mentioned earlier or earlier on are located inside the moss. So these histidine, his tabs enable these receptors and frameworks to interact with each other efficiently. And the first step of our research was to choose which moss, because there are millions of them, which moss to use in our research. And we ended up with three moss, um, UI67 PQIDD, PPF1, and PCM222. Um, when choosing these MOFs, we had to think about um, those that have many binding sites for the protein receptors. And our first one up here has zirconium as its metal ion. And as its ligand, it has EPYEC. It's actually a modification of the original MOF, which is UIO67, which had uh, BPEC as its ligand. But here you can see that the original uh, places where carbon atoms are located they were replaced by nitro nitrogen atoms. And you can see that the metal ions, such as nickel and cobalt, can coordinate more better when the nitrogen atoms are replaced in, over the, in that picture. And the general shape of this metal organic framework, the crystal shape, is shaped like this. And you can see the yellow pore inside. Our second MOF is a 2D MOF, which is named PPF1. And it has um, zinc as its metal ion, and it uses TCPP, which is a type of 
porphyrin acts as its ligand. And you can see here from the structure of porphyrin that uh, in the center, the metal ions can coordinate easily because it can coordinate to the four nitrogen atoms located over there. And that was our second model. Finally, we used PCN222. It's another zirconium-based model because zirconiums are very strong inside water. And it also uses PCPP, porphyrin, as its ligand where the metal ions can coordinate to. And also there are under-coordinated metal sites where the ligands can bind to. And it's a channel-shaped model shaped like this. So we selected a total of seven off candidates, as, as Jun Sung mentioned earlier. And we started synthesizing every one of them. And especially the PCN222, the cobalt and nickel methylated PCN222 type bombs were especially hard to synthesize compared to other metal organic framework, as they required an additional modification process of lysis to make the, the cobalt and nickel ions, uh, uh, cobalt and nickel ions coordinated on the center of the four finger ring. So we carried out that experiment, and in order to confirm that the metal ions have been coordinated at the center, we carried out a Uliness analysis, and the principle goes like this. So when you insert concentrated hydrochloric acid into the supposedly synthesized system, if the, metal, if the porphyrin is not coordinated with metal ions, then the hydrogen, the hydrogen atom from the hydrochloric acid would get inserted into the porphyrin ring, forming a different kind of symmetry than the original precursor. Then this change of symmetry will result in a peak appearance at 666 nanometer wavelength, in which we can confirm that the methylation has been failed. So in the other case, where the, metal, uh, where the methylation experiment has been succeeded, there is a metal coordinated at the center opposed to that picture, which means the hydrogen atom cannot infiltrate into the center of the ring, therefore no change of symmetry at all. And this means the band won't appear at the wavelength, and we could confirm from the results of the UVDIS that the methylation experiment has been succeeded or it has been failed. So moving on to our results stage. This was the control group that we, don't, we didn't carry out any methylation experiment for ordinary PCPP, the porphyrin. And you can see that the band occurred at the 666 nanometer wavelength. And opposed to that, the cobalt, cobalt methylated porphyrin and the nickel methylated porphyrin did not show peaks at the same wavelength. So based on this result, we confirmed that our methylation experiment has been succeeded. And after that, we carried out the other synthetic processes for the supposed the MOL candidates according to the previous researches that we searched on the internet. And we needed to confirm whether our synthesis of metal organic frameworks were succeeded, right? So we carried out something called an XRP, the X-ray powder diffraction analysis. And you can see from this picture that the crystalline, the crystallinity of the metal organic frameworks weren't as good, and they were there are quite a few amorphous comp compositions of the finalized framework. But however, when you focus at the main peaks, as you can see from here, here, and this place, you can see that the main peaks are uh, main peaks are formed at the almost the same x-axis, which means that our desired geometry has been synthesized, therefore confirming that all seven types of MOS were successfully made. And next, so I showed, we showed you in this picture that we wanted to complete a whole, QC, uh, a whole pr protein sensor according to this scheme. So the, our next process was to check if the receptor was compatible with the metal organic ring. So that was, that's our next experiment. So as Junsung mentioned, we started our research in order to find out something called like low density lipoproteins, but due to uh, various issues, we couldn't receive the receptor nor the protein at all. So we decided to change our plans by using green fluorescent protein, which is easily detectable by emitting them with UV and they, uh, by shining them with UV and they emit green, uh, emit green fluorescent light. And uh, we attached, we used something called a his tag to green fluorescent protein, in which the his tag is attached at the end of the protein, and we binded the histide green fluorescent protein to the moth according to this binding process. And after that, after the binding was over, we checked the crystals under uh, what do you call that? a UV microscope, first under visible light, and secondly under 
ultraviolet light to see if they emit green light. So if they emit green light, it means because the, the proteins are binded to the metal organic framers, which means that those uh, those types of MOPs could be used for our further researches, like the, the whole QCM denser stage, the protein denser stage. So this is our result for our seven MOPs. The, picture, the pictures on the left are when, uh, are when the crystals are shown, like, and, and shown with visible light, and the pictures on the right are when they are shown with ultraviolet light. So you can see that five out of seven MOP candidates emit a green light under UV. Um, however, these two didn't, so we just passed them. And we selected, we tried to proceed with all these five metal organic framers for our later experiment, but due to time and money, obviously, we had to choose only one for our research, and we chose something called UIO67 EPYNC. And, for, and we chose that for two reasons. First, they are uh, the coordinated, the metal, open metal site forming that metal organic framework is more under coordinated compared to other metal organic frameworks, thereby making it more available to, strong for, uh, to form stronger coordinated bonds with the HISAC and thus psilocybin. And secondly, they have the least synthesis time and procedure, so they are the most easy to synthesize. So after we choose the mob with UIO67 and we did the mob characterization process, which are TJ analysis and PFL analysis. And we move on to the DMP analysis and field detection of answer and later. Mm -hmm. And we've got the MOP activation, which are putting out all of the precursor solution inside the MOP core. And we've made the precursors, uh, we made the suspension with it using, do, by diluting into the methanol, and we do the deep coding and we do the genetic binding process. And we've uh, derived the mass change by using the Zerberi equation. And so this is a real time, a real time frequency graph of QCM, and we can drive that uh, the calling mass was 20 point, 22.8 micrograms, and binding mass was 7.8 micrograms. So until Pyong's part, we completed until this stage. We coded the MOP on top of the QCM sensor, and we bound the, uh, we binded the receptor on top of the QCM MOP complex and measured the mass change of these two processes. However, we need to check if the receptor was bounded in the right alignment to the metal organic framework and where we desired. So if the binding site of the receptor, it should be faced outwards so that the protein can attach. But however, if the binding site was attached into the metal organic framework like this, then it is inaccessible for protein quantification. So we need to we needed to analyze uh, like how did it bind, and we did we did the analysis by doing something called an illusion, and the principle is like this. So supposedly the the his stack forming his stack forms a coordinated bond with the uh, with the metal ion and the MOPs open metal site. So if you put an interferon solution into this um, this system, then it'll it will form the same type of bond with the metal ion. Therefore, competing with the already formed coordinated ones between the HISAC and the metal organic framework. Thereby, uh, after that, so they can separate the HISAC GFT from the metal ion, and this separated GFT will flow into the supernova. So, after doing this illusion experiment, we could analyze the uh, we could analyze the color change of both the metal organic framework and the supernova to see if uh, HISAC green fluorescent protein is present either in the crystal or the solution. So we checked the illusion experiment for three different interactions, the HISTAC coordination, the hydrophilic interaction, and the hydrophobic interaction. And these are the substances, the interfering substances we use for illusion, and the process goes on like this. And as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we, we, sh we shine both the powder and the, what do you call that, the supernatant with the UV light and measure the color change, check the color change. So as you can see, like even though the illusion process was completed, the color change, the mop powder still emitted green light under UV conditions. And we'll, we'll summarize all of these after we, we show you the supernatant color change. So you can see that all the mops, all the mops retained their green fluorescent light even after the illusion experiment. But um, in controversy, the emit, like the imidazole, which is the interfering solution for the HISTAC coordination, emitted green light after after illusion experiment. However, the n hexane solution, the green, the GFT resides here, and for the case of NaCl, there is no green light emitted after the illusion. The top part is the, just the blank solution, and the bottom is the solution uh, extracted after the illusion. 
So combining this result with that, we got this conclusion. So we concluded that no type of interactions were especially dominant since all the moth powders retained their green, green fluorescent light after the Eurotune experiment. However, comparing the minute amount of interactions that happened here, we can conclude that imidazole, the histide forming agent, and the hydrophilic interaction are the main types of interactions that force between the histide TNC and the methyl organic plane. But however, we assume that our illusion method is not yet finalized. It's just a qualitative analysis, and we still don't know how much percentage of the interaction they form. And we hope to set up other uh, real device, other methods, in order to complete this analysis stage. And basically, that's the end of our research. So to sum up our three points, first, we qualitatively confirmed the intimacy of different type maps to his type GST. And secondly, we devised our novel drop casting method to coat the QCM sensor with the mental organic framework. And finally, we developed our method that is applicable in our school to affirm the interaction mechanism between the MOP and the HISTAC GST. And these are just our suggestions, and I guess that's the end of our presentation. Thank you. So can you go back like two slides when you were talking about the like here? Look back, sorry, just that. So I can't remember, but NX N hexane is measuring hyd hydrophobic. Yes. yes. So I'm just surprised because I would imagine hydrophilic might be expected due to the ionic interaction between the histag and the moth. So, but I don't know. I, I, I haven't done the literature reviews like you guys. Did, 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 did you anticipate a result like that? Did you anticipate uh, no interaction in the hydrophobic or hydrophilic? Actually, we were also surprised, but to confess, we sort of rushed this part because it was almost before our deadline. <laughs> <laughs> we all understand that. I mean, it's, it, 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 it's, it, Really nice work. I should have started that with the question with that, but it's really nice. I just was curious if you had the same suspicion that I had. Did you do any control experiments with your moss uh, using the GFP molecule without a his 6 tag? Oh, we used that. Um, so actually, for this image, uh, we used uh, UI 67 without the DQI, which means only the bipyridyl lichen. And we also use just ordinary GFP in this experiment. Because we thought if we use imidazole and also the open level sites in the moss, it would be too complicated for us to convert the slide. results. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we simplified the system and for this part. Okay. So with your future plan, you want to use this as an application for LDLs? Uh, not no, just LDLs, yeah. but different any types. type of proteins. Okay, but I mean, when you're talking specifically with your own personal interest uh, with LDL, did you want to separate them? Because you know there are a lot of, several different kinds of LDLs, right? Yeah. And so is that kind of what you're going for, is to analyze the different LDL components, or just overall LDL is something faster than a typical cholesterol analysis? Or? I think the second one would be. Would be more what you're yeah, looking yeah. for? Yeah. Do you have any other questions?